So I'm watching Vikings, right? And I get to season two and I'm thinking, oh, wow, the cliffhanger at the end of season one was so good. I'm in for a real doozy of a season. And then to my surprise, the cliffhanger at the end of season one gets resolved within the first half of episode one. In other words, they nerfed the cliffhanger. Now, I'm not one to tell people what's good and bad writing, but that is bad. Kidding, kidding, but uh, I do generally think it's a bad idea. Here's why. Just a quick reminder, I am an author, and if you want to check out my books, they're listed in the description below. So I should probably tell you what Vikings is about. It follows this legendary Viking hero named Ragnar Lothbrok as he goes on various exploits to pillage the West, aka England. So what happened was is that we got off the boat and we thought, wow, it's Thursday, it's a beautiful day to pillage and kill some monks. And so we just, you know, sauntered on over to the monasteries and just started slaughtering and burning. I really do think we did quite a thorough job, don't you agree, governor? <laughs> Flip. In the process, he becomes Earl and gains a lot of fame and notoriety. Main characters include his wife Lagertha, his brother Rollo, various friends and foes, and eventually his sons. Also, I think it's worth mentioning that I have only seen seasons 1 and 2 and most of season 3. So what is this nerfed cliffhanger, you might ask? Well, at the end of season 1, Rollo betrays Ragnar and joins forces with his enemy, Jarl Borg, who is waging war because Ragnar sided with Borg's political rival, King Horik. It is literally the last scene in the season, even coming after the protagonist Ragnar scene where he betrays his wife with a mistress, and that's very significant because his wife is a main character. So the show deemed Rollo's betrayal a bigger cliffhanger to end season one and the most important scene that will lead to season two, even more so than the main character. So that's basically saying like just how important this betrayal is. It was built up during season one and all but confirmed in the season finale that Rollo was going to be a major antagonist in season two. 12 minutes into season two episode one, however, after a battle between Ragnar's army and Jarl Borg's army, Rollo kills one of his former friends and is faced with his brother in combat and he surrenders, joining back with his brother. Yay! For 12 minutes, we got the antagonist season one promised. 12 freaking minutes. Okay. To be completely fair, Rollo's betrayal and surrender wasn't without conflict. During season two, there was a lot of emotional turmoil between him and his brother and his friends. I mean, he's basically reduced to this pathetic version of himself, pitying himself and ashamed of his betrayal. Now, it's a good thing that the show explored the emotional fallout of his actions, but that doesn't make the early resolution of the cliffhanger satisfying. In fact, it kind of makes it worse. See, if Rollo was allowed to be a man antagonist for longer than 12 minutes, then this kind of emotional conflict would mean more, specifically to the audience. It's not said exactly how much time has passed between seasons one and two, but it's probably at least half a year. So that's a lot of time for Rollo to be antagonist in the story's world, but not to the audience, because that time skip is off screen. The battle at the start of season two is essentially the climax of their sibling rivalry in season one and serves as a catalyst for their emotional conflict that lasts basically the entirety of season two. In other words, it's an extremely important moment, but it felt cheapened because the buildup to Rollo's surrender, aka the time he spends being a villain, is so short. It doesn't really matter how much time passes in the story if the audience doesn't feel the effect of it. Yes, Rollo may have been traitor for half a year or more, but to the audience, it was only 12 minutes. If the writers had moved this climax of their season one conflict to later on in season two, or even at the end, then it would have given the audience sufficient time to experience Rollo as a villain. We would see what that does emotionally to his character and Ragnar's character, and then that moment of Rollo's change of heart would have meant more, and the emotional conflict after would have meant more. There is something to be said about this early resolution subverting
subverting audience expectations, it definitely subverted mine. I mean, I was expecting Rollo to be the villain of season two, or at least a villain. That is basically what season one implied. I mean, all season he was built up to be an antagonist. I mean, he literally rapes a girl in episode one, and the cliffhanger at the end of season one when Rollo sides with Ragnar's enemy was a very important moment for Rollo's character and his relationship with his brother. It told the audience that, hey, their sibling rivalry is about to get way worse, Ragnar will be forced to fight his brother, whom he loves, and Rollo is going to be his enemy, both emotionally and politically. Season 1 was a negative character arc for Rollo. He just started resenting his brother and craving power more and more until he finally decided to betray Ragnar for his own political gain. And the cliffhanger pointed towards an actual war between the two brothers, a physical and political conflict. And then season two basically abandons that trajectory. It feels like it comes from out of nowhere, like a plot twist that wasn't set up well. I mean, that is basically what happened. The audience was led to believe one thing, aka Rolo being a villain. Everything in the story made sense for them to believe that one thing, aka season one setting Rolo up to be a villain. And then the story does a 180 and it doesn't make sense. Season one established that yes, he loved his brother, but I think it was also heavily implied that he wanted power and fame more. This switch from betraying his brother to surrendering to him could have made sense, but because there is so little time with him as a villain, his almost immediate change of heart feels inconsistent with the story and his character. I'm all for writers subverting expectations. I mean, I try to do that when I write. It's fun to do that, but it also has to make sense for the story that has already been told and the story that's going to be told. You don't want it to cheapen the narrative up to the twist and you don't want it to cheapen what happens after. Cliffhangers are unresolved conflict. As viewers, we want to see the conflict resolved. When you end one part of the story on a cliffhanger, you're saying that conflict is important to the next part of the story. It doesn't have to be the entire plot, but it should be more than 12 minutes worth. It's like if a movie cuts to black with a character dangling on the edge of a cliff, then at the start of the next movie, they let go. Except instead of falling into a gorge and breaking every bone in their body, the ground's only a few feet below. It's not what the previous movie built up, it's not what the audience was expecting, and it's not really what they wanted. It's just unsatisfying. If you nerf your cliffhangers, eventually people will stop being afraid of heights. I'm done ranting now. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you take my opinion as anything but gospel, and I hope you check out my books in the description below. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.